Go grab your coffee, your tea, a comfy seat in your house, and let's dig into some of these juicy style and personal questions. Hi ladies, it's Erin and welcome back to my channel. So there are a lot of you who have questions often and we do see common themes with these questions. So in this video, I wanna tackle some of those more common style questions. We did do a part one of this, by the way, so if you wanna have just more of your style questions answered, you can go back and watch that one after this one. And this one, I'm focused on some style questions and also some personal questions. It's been a long time since I've just sat and talked and updated you, and there are quite a few updates. So so I wanted to weave those throughout this video as well. I'm gonna do it in two categories. I'm gonna start with personal and then progress to style. So be sure to watch all the way to the end because there's lots of great style questions coming up. All right, so let's dive into the personal first. Question number one, are we still making the bag, the handbag, the Busby Collection handbag? This is a tough one. This process started over a year and a half ago. As some of you may know, I really looped you all in in the beginning of this process. I asked you for your feedback, you were involved in the design, and all of that was very exciting and really interesting and fascinating to me. Along this path, we've come across so many roadblocks, so many challenges, which, you know, I'm fine with challenges. I can handle it, like just a bump in the road, we'll figure out a solution and move on. We've gotten to this place where we're facing another huge roadblock and it's sort of like I can see another path forward, but it almost feels like we're starting all over again with like a new manufacturer and a new team to help out. I spoke to the team about this after very careful consideration and with a heavy heart, I have to tell you guys that we've decided to put this on hold indefinitely. I'm so, so sorry. I know there's so many of you who weighed in with your thoughts and your feedback and you were so amazing in your support and your questions. I don't think this is the right way to do it. I believe there is a product potential for Busby for Busby style and the team down the road, but maybe it's going to look differently and it's going to be in a different way. It's not going to be just me doing it by myself. What I've really discovered is not only is this like a completely separate business, even though it's very closely tied, it's a very separate business. It would take a lot of time, energy, but most importantly, capital. It takes a lot of capital up front, which is a huge amount of risk, but that really wasn't the impetus for this decision. This decision came down to me getting quiet, really getting honest with myself about whether this is something I wanna pursue or not, really talking to the team about it, getting their honest thoughts and feedback, and the decision that we came up with was was this isn't really what I want to do anymore in this way and that we think we can better serve you in other ways. So I hope you can understand that. I'm really sorry if you're disappointed. Again, I'm not closing the door on this altogether. It's just, I don't think it's gonna be something we do completely on our own. That said, we are exploring opportunities for online classes, which is something I've known about for a long time. I'm like in an online class once a month as a consumer, I love them. But for me personally, I was like, ah, I don't really wanna do that. It felt like it was a little bit like I'm tethered to that. But we figured out a way to do it that felt really good to me and I think it's gonna be so great for you all. And we created a, a mini course called Style Made Simple. And this is really designed to help you just like reset, get everything in order on the foundational level of your wardrobe. If you feel like you're already pretty good in the style department and you don't need that fine tuning, it's probably not the class for you, but if you feel like, ah oh, man, I just feel lost, I'm not sure where to go, I'm all over the place, I have trouble figuring out what to wear in the morning, don't know what to buy, this is the class for you. It's just really gonna get that foundation of your wardrobe super strong. You're gonna have all of the tools that you need and all the information that you need to make sure that you have that foundational wardrobe. That's exciting and we're really proud of this class all of the work that went into it. It was a complete team effort. I think that we'll do more of these. If it goes well and you all like it, I think we'll do more of these. What I'd really love to do is a class around the whole concept of healing with a focus on the inside out approach to style and beauty. That's something that's swirling around in my mind. I'd love to know what your thoughts might be on that. I'm thinking of introducing some of these healing modalities that I have been through and experienced firsthand and bringing in experts who specialize in those modalities, giving you the resources and the tools that you need so that you can really heal 
the inside, which then radiates on the outside. So that's an idea that I'm tossing around too. So I'd love your thoughts there. If you want more information about the Style Made Simple course, of course you can look in the description box below. Let us know if you have any questions about that course too. Question two, can you update us on your exercise, diet, wellness, what you eat in a day? That's like a lot to cover in one question. I'm just gonna give you my new mindset and my new philosophy about diet and exercise. I just got to a place where I got really tired. Tired of being on the wheel or the roller coaster, whatever you wanna call it, of extreme, not extreme, extreme, not extreme. You know, I was doing all of these different diets, eating in all these different ways, trying all these different exercise programs, and for a long time through perimenopause and menopause, trying different combinations of HRT and different supplements and different this and different that. I'm not gonna tell you the journey wasn't worth it because I think it was. I've learned so, so much and I feel like it's enabled me to really kind of teach on this topic and speak from a place of experience and knowledge. But where I am right now is a place of surrender. And I don't mean surrender in the sense of, I'm just gonna give up. I'm gonna gain 100 pounds and just eat ding-dongs all day and not care. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about just not obsessing, thinking about food and exercise in a healthier way. Oh, this food would really nourish my body or give my body en the energy it needs to sustain this busy day. Or I'm gonna move my body today because that feels good to me. Or I'm gonna do this exercise like a walk with my dog or a hike because it's a beautiful fall day and I really wanna go outside and see the leaves. Or I'm going to do 15 minutes of yoga because I feel a little tight in my shoulders and I just want to feel a little looser and that would feel really good to my body. I want to do some dancing while I'm cleaning because that feels fun to me. I'm just thinking about it from a different approach. And I know that for many of you, and even for myself often, like if you don't have a specific routine, then it may not get done. And the truth is, it doesn't get done for me a lot of days lately. The exercise piece, the eating healthy piece, I've been pretty good lately, but I just don't even wanna think about that in terms of good or bad, do or don't. I just wanna be healthy. I just want to be energized. I just want to be vibrant. And so that's the way I'm looking at food and exercise. I want to do something that feels good for my body. I want to feed my body something that would give it energy and sustain it and nurture it. And I'm giving this a try and I'm just being really kind to myself and granting myself grace and just seeing where this road takes me. That's very hard for me to do. Typically, I like to have the plan. I like to have the routine. I like to have a system. But I'm really just trying to be more in that flow of life and surrender more. I am on the same HRT regime that I've been on for a while, and that is an estrogen patch I put onto my abdomen, and it lasts for a week. I take an oral pill progesterone every night before bed. It does make you sleepy, so you're supposed to take it before bed. And then I also take lyothyronine for my thyroid, because I have hypothyroidism. One of the things that I am digging into a little bit more now is how as a menopausal woman, you can become insulin resistant, can make it difficult for you to break down sugars. I am trying to limit sugar intake as much as possible, but not fruits or anything like that. I mean, just straight up like sugar. I don't drink soda. I don't drink alcohol. I rarely drink calories. I usually eat calories, although I do like coconut water sometimes. I do like smoothies that I'll have sometimes as a snack, which you wouldn't catch me like with a Coke, you know, obviously I don't drink, which if you want to know more about that, by the way, which is a huge, huge step toward healing, which we were just talking about. I did a video on all of the amazing things that happened when I quit drinking. I am just about coming up on 13 years sober now feels like a long time. I guess it kind of is a long time, but it single-handedly is one of the best decisions I ever made in my life. It also saves a lot of calories. <laughs> I know that's a really broad, big question, but I hope that kind of answers some of it. So now let's move on to question number three. What do you do with the clothes that you no longer wear? Do you sell them, give them away, keep them? I used to give them away. Now... The kids are trying to sell them on Poshmark. So if you're interested, you could follow Busby Style on Poshmark. It's my two children who are running the account. There aren't a ton of pieces up for sale right now, but there are definitely are pieces up for sale. And I told them I would help them this weekend kind of set up 
with more pieces. So that's the plan. I really want the kids to learn about entrepreneurship, how that works, the pieces that go into it. And then also with the proceeds, like they give some to me because they're my clothing and then they're going to give some to charity and then they keep the rest for themselves. And I love the idea of them being able to earn their own money too, which empowers them, gives them freedom and makes them feel good. That's what we're doing with the clothes now. Question four, do you ever do a no makeup day or stay in loungewear all day? No, I'm always dressed like this. <laughs> of course, if I'm not shooting, I'm rarely wearing makeup. Most days I am not wearing makeup, any makeup at all, none, zip. A lot of times my hair's in a bun. My clothes are like a cool Nation LTD tee and some sweatpants or some James Purse joggers or something like that. That's like what I hang out in. I mean, my hangout clothes are always chic. I could still answer the door. I could still go run an errand, pick up kids or whatever, but it's not like, fully dressed every day. It doesn't really make sense. I, I work from home. We live in a very casual place. There aren't really that many opportunities to, for me to dress up. It doesn't stop me from buying dressy clothes. I make occasions. I love clothes. I feel like sometimes I'll buy clothes just to find places to wear them. It inspires activities or events, but no, absolutely not. I do not wear makeup and get dressed every day. By the way, I did just do an updated makeup routine video. If you wanna watch that video after this one, it's really to create this very kind of almost like a no makeup makeup look, but it is a lot of makeup, but it's a very dewy, fresh, youthful look. Question number five, what do I use to curl my hair? Right now, I have sort of a 70s wave going on with my curtain bangs. And for that, I use the Dyson Airwrap. There are two tapered ones, one for each side, and I just swap them out and I do each side of the curtain bang with the Dyson Airwrap. The rest of the hair has just been round brushed and blown dry. And then sometimes after I'm done blow drying, I'll put my hair up in a bun and just keep it like that until I'm done with the rest of my makeup. And then it becomes a little more wavy if I leave it up in a bun like that. Otherwise, I use a GHD tapered wand. I love the GHD tapered wand. I love GHD. I only really discovered GHD in Spain because that was the brand that they had at the Sephora near our apartment. And I fell in love with it in Spain. And then I bought another one when I got back to the States. So now I have two, one for Europe and one for US but I love the GHD tapered wand, awesome. Question six, I loved hearing that you were getting together with your whole team for a retreat. Could you tell us more about it? What was it like to get to meet your whole team in person? We have a lot of contractors that are also a part of the team or an extension of the team, but our core team, these are employees, part-time employees. It's seven of us total. Of the seven, I'm one of the seven. And I had not met three in person before. As a reward for everyone's efforts and hard work and the great year that we had in 2021, I decided to treat everyone to a team retreat at the Miraval Resort in Arizona which I am so, so happy I did. I feel like it was such a wonderful experience for everybody, myself included. Went into that without a huge plan, just knew like this is a place that is equipped to take a team and do really amazing creative things with the team based on what they wanna do, what they wanna learn about. So we did have some activities each day together, but everyone was able to create their own schedule and then we all got together for dinners in the evening. Everybody opened up, everybody got vulnerable, everybody shared, everybody connected, bonded. I really, it could not have gone better. I have such a special group of women working with me and I, I don't take that for granted for even a second. And I hope that you all know that there is this wonderful, amazing group of women behind the scenes here that are really helping me to bring you all of this content. And as we grow, I look forward to hiring more incredible women like these women. I used to be worried about having overhead and how much I was spending on the idea of an employee would have been suffocating to me in the beginning. Like, oh my gosh, no, no. Now I'm excited about it. I wanna like grow so we can hire more women. I have the opposite feeling about it now. It feels like I am given this gift that I'm able to support these women on their journey and then they're also giving back to me and supporting me. It's just. It's just really awesome. Retreat could not have gone better. I literally don't have enough words to say how much I loved it. It was transformative. And it was exactly what I think we all needed and what I needed too, because this is really the sort of the lane that I wanna go into 
creating some sort of online experience that can be transformative for you. Now let's transition over to style questions. And this is question number seven. What are your favorite fashion trends this fall winter? Which are you skipping? So we did do a whole video on fall fashion trends, what's in, what's out. We also did a blog post. So depending on which medium or which platform you'd prefer to digest that information, I would recommend watching or reading that because feel like it's important to know where fashion is. But so for me, my favorites are pink. Pink is so, so, so in right now. And I always wear pink, like regardless. I'm very happy that platforms are back in style. I love platforms because I'm only 5'4 and they add the height. And you know what? In the beginning, I was resistant to the looser fitting jeans and feeling like doesn't feel right and awkward, you know, kind of how I talked about in the video where I discuss how skinny jeans aren't quite as in as they used to be. We'll put a link to that video below if you want to watch that one, but I really am enjoying the looser fits. Now when I put on a pair of like skin tight skinny jeans, which you still need, you know, for taller boots or whatever, it feels uncomfortable to me. I'm actually enjoying the looser fits and the oversized fits, which I did not think I would ever say. Are you enjoying the looser fits? What am I skipping this year? I don't think I'm skipping any. I love all the trends this year. Question number eight. I'm petite and I love moto jackets. Most of the ones that I love have zippers at the arm or cuff and the arms are too long. Oof. Is there a good solution? A really good tailor could handle that, no problem. But most of us are not in a place where we have like really good tailors. Like if I were living in New York City, I would take that moto jacket to the tailor and not blank. But here, I'm probably not gonna do that. I would look for a moto jacket that comes in petite sizing. Just did a quick Google search. Banana Republic has some. There are others like ASOS has some. You can find petite moto jackets. It's just not gonna be as robust a selection. Another thing you might wanna consider is looking for one that doesn't have an arm detail that's so tricky for a tailor like the zipper, for example. Another option is to just always push the sleeves up. Here's a model wearing like a cuff sleeve on her moto jacket and that's always an option too. Remember too that for your arm, the longest you wanna go is probably that first thumb joint right here. It gives you quite a bit of length. So even if it's that long, you can still just zhuzh it up a little bit and you're good. Hopefully that helps. I know that's a tricky one for petites. You could also look for a three quarter sleeve moto or a different version like a, a knit moto with three quarter sleeve and maybe that would help. Number nine, how to hike, exercise or do yard work and still look pulled together. This really comes down to just some thoughtful planning. So if you have just like one or two good outfits for exercise, I think I think you're fine. Like an exercise set that you really like. There's no rule against hiking in your yoga clothes. I've done it a bunch, especially if they're more aggressive hikes. I actually feel better in yoga clothes. Or you could just do a really cool pair of jogger pants. Like I have an old pair by Alala that I really love called the Fast Track Pants. And those are really cool to wear hiking. They're very lightweight. They wick away moisture. And then just have like a really cute matching jacket. If you do basic colors like blacks, navies, tans, then everything will work together. And that's how you can look more chic and polished no matter what you're doing. But you don't always have to wear active wear or performance fabrics when you're hiking or doing yard work. You could wear like a cute pair of joggers and a cute t-shirt. When I went hiking in the Middle East and I didn't wanna bring like a full separate hiking outfit, I hiked in my cotton, gauzy cotton, white button down rail shirt and a pair of Prana shorts. You have a lot of options depending on what type of hiking and outdoor work you're gonna do. But I'd say when in doubt, either go the route of having like one or two really cute coordinated sets or just buying a few key pieces in the same color families that all mix and match together. Number 10, are scarves still in? Scarves are never out. Scarves are always in because it's a utilitarian piece. Like here in this climate in Colorado, I have to wear scarves some days because it is just that cold. So I still wear scarves all the time in the fall and the winter. I wear them with a coat or with a blazer. I have a, an old Dior scarf that I love that I wear really year round. If you're struggling with the scarf situation, just wear them with a blazer, a lightweight jacket, 
or a coat and it will always look intentional and well put together. It's not one of those moments where everybody's wearing scarves. Like remember the blanket scarf days where it was like scarves were everywhere. It's not really one of those moments. So you can kind of like take a step back a little bit with the scarf, but you could also wear them, you know, like on vacation over your head. But I think for right now for this season, I would just do like with your lightweight jacket or with your coat. The bonus question here is what is the etiquette for hats? Questions usually, I love wearing hats, but then what do you do when you go into a restaurant and so forth? What is the etiquette? If the hat is not a baseball hat, it's like a fedora or some intentional like part of your outfit. There's no rule, etiquette rule, saying you have to take that hat off when you reach your destination. You can totally leave your hat on. However, you're probably gonna wanna take it off just to like be able to connect with whomever you're talking to better. Also, if you're at a wedding or something like that and you're wearing a hat, you would definitely want to take it off because you don't wanna block anyone's view. If you're sitting in front of somebody, that could block their view. But otherwise, there is no rule for women when it comes to taking hats off inside the same way there is with men. But baseball hats, technically, you should take off. Like if you're in a sports bar, it's like who's gonna care, right? But if you are following the etiquette rules, then you should take the baseball hat off. I would say if you're wearing the hat like to cover your hair because you're having a bad hair day, then just leave the hat on. But if you have pretty good hair under your hat, just take the hat off because it's just gonna be easier for you when you sit down for a meal to take that hat off. I got one more bonus question for you. What? Yes, I know. Are skinny jeans out? I did a whole video on this. They are not out. You can still wear your skinny jeans, especially with a tall boot. Like I just got this new pair of Western Paris, Texas boots that I would absolutely wear with skinny jeans. That said, if you're only wearing skinny jeans with everything, I think it's time to maybe consider a looser fitting option. And you've got everything from flare to boot cut to straight, crop flare, wide leg, you've got lots and lots and lots of choices. You can find one that really works beautifully for your body shape and your budget. What other questions do you have, either style or personal? Do you have anything you wanna clarity on in terms of the answers that I gave? Put that in the comments below. We will put links to anything I talked about in the description box below and information about the new Style Made Simple course also in the description box below. Thank you guys so much for being here, for listening, for always being so supportive and understanding and having my back and having my team's back. I can't tell you what an incredible honor it is to be a part of this community and I'm so proud of who you all are and who we are as a group and how positive and uplifting and wonderful everybody is. So just wanted to say thank you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.